Hey coaches, it's Tracy Granada here. And today's video is all about handling objections. So how many of you, when you have an objection, you tend to like crouch down and you want to crawl back into a hole because it seems scary and you're just not sure how to handle it. After this video, I know that you are going to feel more confident in how to overcome some of those objections. So let's go ahead and get started. Objections. Objections are hard. It's when somebody says no to you. All right. And it's a hard kind of pill to swallow. But when you feel more confident and when you feel passionate about what it is that you're doing and the tools that you can provide to help people reach their goals, I know that you'll just be able to roll with those objections like it's just everyday conversation for you. But the more successful you are as a coach, the more objections you're going to have. The more successful of a coach that you are, the more it means the more invites that you're having so the more opportunity or the more chances you might have to hear from somebody no this isn't for me or i don't have time or it's too much money or something to that effect all right so objections are hard but the more successful you are the more objections you're going to get to certain things but because it means that you are just inviting more so when you get objections a lot of times it's definitely not personal a lot of times it's just because people don't have enough information. All right, maybe they don't see how this can relate to them. Maybe they're just unsure about what it is that you're asking them to do. So it's up to us as coaches to just dig a little bit deeper. It's up to us to ask more questions. Rejections are usually a sign of fear and doubt from people. When people say no to something, it's because they're afraid of it. All right, they're afraid that they might fail. They're afraid they can't do it. They're afraid that they can't handle something. All right, it's usually just because they're unsure. They don't have all the answers. And so for them to say no to something is much easier for them than to come back and just ask a question about it. So really don't take no for an answer until you get a definite no. All right, so I like to compare this because the tools that we have, Selling someone fitness, it's game changing for their life, right? Selling someone Shakeology, that's game changing for their life. It's not asking somebody to buy, um, you know, a candle or to buy, you know, a tote bag. All right. This is life changing to people. It's hard to get someone to want to invest in something that's going to change their lives. But yet people will turn away and they will always say, you know, if a doctor get, you know, offers them a prescription, not that they might not need it, but they don't ever shake their head no at paying $100 for a prescription if they need it. Or if their child needs a $100 prescription, they don't shake their head at it. They just do it because it's important to them. All right. Same thing. They've got to see the value in this and how these products in these tools are important to them for them to want to invest in it. All right. People invest in stuff that's important to them. Buying a new tote bag or a candle, a lot of times those things are just, you know, they're not necessities. They're more of like wants versus a need. And they're just like, oh, okay. But they see a value in it. They see it as something fun. Same thing with this. They've got to see value in it if you want them to invest in it. Also, with handling objections, uh, I don't do a lot of cold marketing myself and cold hard selling, and here's why. When you don't have trust built with people, they're more likely to say no to something, all right? So if you're asking some random person that you don't have a good relationship with, that you haven't asked them what their fitness goals are, what they've tried in the past, what they've struggled with, what they and heard what maybe they like or what they have been successful with. When you haven't asked those type of, of questions with people and built a good relationship with them, they're more likely to say no. All right, so it's up to you to build up that relationship with people because it kind of takes that fear and that doubt away from them. They really will feel like, hey, I've got a good relationship with them. I really see that you know, Tracy is seeing great success and I wanna do more of what she's doing. She talks about you know, doing this, you know, drinking the Shakeology, making all these healthy recipes, doing this awesome workout. She's seeing great results. We've had great conversation back and forth. She's been a cheerleader for me. I've you know, talked to her a little bit about it. I have a great relationship. She's more likely to say yes because she's seeing the results and she's seeing someone she trusts and someone she knows get those results. So when they say no, it's usually out of fear and out of doubt. 
and that fear and the doubt fuels that no answer, all right? So don't take it personal. It usually just means, hey, they don't have enough information yet, all right? We haven't you know, probed them with questions. We haven't asked them enough questions to get them to you know, be a little bit more curious. So it's our job as coaches to certainly build relationships with those people, all right, and work people through their excuses. So one of the biggest um, excuses that we hear from people, right, is the price objection. It's cost. They're just not sure on the price. You ask them to join a challenge group, they look at all the information, and then they're just like, ah, that price is a little bit steeper than maybe I'm willing to spend right now. All right, so how do we talk to people about that? How do we get through, you know, like, hey, this is a good investment. Well, hopefully you've already built that relationship with them. You've asked them questions about, you know, hey, what workouts have you, you know, they've maybe seen your story on Instagram or they've seen your post and you, you know, put a call to action out there. Hey, I'm looking for three people to join me. You know, message me if you want more information. Someone messages you, hey, I want more, more information. I really want to get more fit. I want to eat better. I want to learn. You send them information, but you talk to them, you know, about some of their questions. Great. Thank you so much for replying back to me. I see, you know, that you want to get, you know, more fit. You want to learn to eat better. What types of foods do you like? How would you rate your current nutrition level? What have you tried eating in the past that's gotten you good results? What fitness programs have you tried in the past that maybe you've gotten good results with? What programs don't you like? How would you rate your current nutrition or your current fitness? What, um, what workouts have you done in the past that have gotten you the results that you are you know, happy about? How much time in your day do you have for workouts? These are all questions that I would ask, maybe not all those at once, but I would pick and choose maybe one nutrition question and one fitness question and ask them those questions just to get conversation going. So it doesn't sound like you are, here's my link to order. This is what the program's all about. It's, hey, thanks for your reply. Ask them these questions first. So you are building relationships. You are building trust. Then when it gets to the point where you've had some conversation going back and you send them the link and they are like, ah, gosh, $130 for a bag of Shakeology right now or $160 for the All Access Challenge Pack right now just seems a little steep. You can go back to them and go back to their goals, go back to what's worked for them in the past or where they're struggling and why they're struggling. And you can say to them, hey, here's how I think this will help you. I know the price seems a little bit steep right now, but here's why I think it will help. And you can go back to the goals of that person. All right, so a conversation that you might have is, Hey, I hope you're having a great day. I see this past weekend you went away on, you know, a girl's trip. Super fun. I hope you had a great time. Thanks for writing me back. I wanted to write you back and just let you know some of my thoughts. All right. I know that this group is going to work for you because, and I hope that you don't mind me sharing my own experience. I know you said $130 seems a little bit steep in price for the cost of Shakeology, but I really wanna share with you how I make it work. For me personally, I put it right into my grocery bill. It's $130 a month budgeted in for my groceries. All right, it's 30 meals right there in one 30 day supply of Shakeology. It's not much over the price of $5. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, and it's gonna take out that you know guesswork. I also heard you say that you skip breakfast. Or I also heard you say that, you know, you're generally running kids around at dinner time and you don't have a lot of time to prep. This is going to help you fill that gap. It's so easy. And I will share you recipes that will be, you know, super fun and very um, tasty for you. It's worth it. I promise. I get it. It's an investment in you. I'm guessing you probably haven't spent that kind of money on yourself before, and that's why that investment might seem a little bit much, but I guarantee it will help you. Also, did you know that Beachbody offers you know, a 30-day money-back guarantee? All right, a lot of times people don't know that, and so if you share that with them, you can also you know, help them overcome that fear 
Maybe they're like, Hey, I mean, what if I don't like it? I'm going to be stuck with this, you know, and I'm going to, you know, waste $130. No, you're not. You can send it back. All right. So maybe if you say that, if you try it and you don't like it, you can get your money back. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. What do you think? All right. So then after you explain to them and you share with them, like, Hey, I totally get it. I totally understand you. Here's how I feel about it. Here's how I felt. Here's how I make it, made it happen. And this is what I found, right? It's kind of that feel felt found method of this feel felt found is how it's one of the great kind of, um, systems or equations to help you overcome these equations. You know, I totally get it. That's how I, you know, felt too. I can relate to you, but here's what I found. All right. That feel felt found method. And then just asking them, Hey, what do you think? You know, at the end of it. So with objections on the money thing, guess what? People always spend money on things that they, you know, on things that they value, right? How many, my friend Sarah once said, um, in an objection uh, video, hey, people will always spend money on stuff that they value. Even people on food stamps, you'll notice that they have the latest and greatest TVs or video games or things like that. Like, hey, people will spend money on stuff that they value. So can you, you know, give them the information that they need, help create value around it so that they feel confident in their decision making? All right, Carl Deichler recently shared a video too. He's a CEO of our company. He recently shared a video on kind of a price objection kind of checklist. So number one, it's hear them out, all right? Don't interrupt them, just let them talk. If you're talking face-to-face -face or let them write via email, hear them out. Then number two, you're gonna ask them in their own words. You know, is it the price that's truly holding them back? Or is it that they just don't know, you know, more about the product, all right? then listen to their response, all right? If price really is that concern for them, then validate that concern. Say, you know, hey, I totally get it, but here's how I budgeted it into my grocery bill, all right? I feel you, here's what I do, all right? Reaffirm that for them. Then share insights and experiences on the price perspective. That's the grocery budget, right? It's a cost of a cup of coffee, all right? It's better nutrition. All right, it's less meal prep for them. It's less junk. It's fueling their body with the fuel and the dense nutrition that it needs to help it run properly, essentially. All right, then bring it back to their goal. Hey, I know that you said you wanted to lose five pounds. What you're doing right now isn't maybe working for you. I guarantee you that in 30 days, you will feel better and you will be on your way to losing that five pounds, all right? Or, hey, what you're doing right now for your own nutrition, skipping breakfast isn't working for you. What if I could give you this to help you replace that? It's the same cost as you running through the McDonald's drive through and it's even faster than waiting in that McDonald's drive through line, right? Um, the 30 day money back guarantee, I always like to drive it home with that and just let them know like, hey, that's always an option, all right? It's always an option, it's always out there for you. Then if they say, okay, I'm in, then you can send them their direct link either through share a cart or maybe you want to do it through um, the Beachbody links also in your back office. All right, so the price objection is usually the biggest one. Another one you might have is time from people. You know, I don't have enough time to work out. That's when I always bring it back to, well, how much time do you really think you need? All right, a lot of times people will say, well, I think I need to have an hour and an hour just really isn't, you know, what I have in my day right now. And I'm like, did you know that you can get results in 30 minutes? Check out my friend, Jamie. All right. Jamie just rocked, you know, 21 day fix and 21 days doing 30 minute workouts, focusing on her nutrition. These are the results that she got. All right. Use real results. Beachbody um, Team Rockstar Fit has a great results group that you can go and pull results from. There's many results right here in the Team Rockstar Fit page that you can take results from. The 80 Day Obsession Coach group is a great place to get results from. Go to the 21 Day Fix Facebook group. Check out all those pages. Give people some results and say, hey, in 30 minutes, these are some results that you can get. This person's a mom just like you and she can do it. And I know you can too. All right, so if someone isn't going to take that time or they think they need a lot of time and they're not willing to make that time, then you gotta remind them like, hey, your vicious cycle is never gonna stop. 
You are always going to be a hamster on a hamster wheel running yourself ragged. And did you know that if you just took 30 minutes a day to focus on you, you'll be able to handle everything else in life better. And if you're not willing to do that, life is just going to keep going away from you and reminding them of that, that they're going to say like, Hey, I'm just super busy. I don't have time for it. Well, then you're never going to have time for it if you don't make it right? You're never going to have time to get the results that you want if you don't make it. And I always like to say to people, and I know sometimes it sounds super harsh, but you will make time when it's going to be least convenient. When you, you know, have a heart attack or you have something serious happen to you, you always end up making time, right? You make time to go to the doctor when you're sick. You make time to go to physical therapy when, you know, for your back pain, when all it might take is you losing five or 10 pounds or same thing for your knee. You'll make time for those appointments, but why can't you make time for your fitness? Let's start it right now. So time, another busy one or another objection a lot of times is the I'm too busy. And hopefully some of those tips helped you as well. I talked about the feel felt found method uh, is a great way. Like I feel you. Here's how I felt. All right, but here's what I found. All right, and then the other one that you can certainly use, another formula is, I don't know about that, but what I do know is. So a lot of times you might also hear somebody say, well, I've been using this product or this, you know, protein drink, and I really like this one. You know, how does it compare? All right, you can say, well, hey, I really don't know about that one, but what I do know is that Shakeology is much more than just a protein drink. All right, it is a nutrient dense meal replacement shake. It's a nutrient dense multivitamin that you will drink every day. Yes, it's got protein in it, but it's not just a protein shake, it's much more than that. So the formula, I don't know about that, but what I do know is, is another formula that can help you handle those objections. So yay, I hope that some of those helped. I hope that walking you through that conversation, I hope that some of those tips help you feel more confident in handling any objection that comes your way. Those two formulas feel felt found, and I don't know about that, but what I do know is those can be used for any of this um, to handle any objection that you might get across your plate. But also just remember that this business is built on building trust and building relationships. And when people trust you and they hear from you and they know that you are asking them questions to help them get to the bottom of their no, that they will more likely see value in it. And that's what it's all about. It's building that trust. It's building that, those relationships through asking those questions. And hopefully they will see the benefit of it after that. Just remember, no is never a no until you get a flat out no. And no doesn't always mean, no just means not right now in a lot of cases for a lot of people. So they will come back around um, and it's good for you to keep asking those questions. So thanks for tuning in.